All right, here we are. We're uh, wrapping up, getting close to wrapping up our uh, portfolio tutorials. And uh, this tutorial is all about the showcase, inserting content uh, for the showcase page, which is probably, I think, the coolest page of the whole entire portfolio, because this is where you get to showcase your work, your talents, the things that you've created um, as, a, as a high school student. Um, and really, this is, this is all about you. You know, obviously, the portfolio has all been about you. But this is about um, showing with examples of what you can do. Um, so first of all, let's take a look at an example of a uh, showcase page. We're going to go, I've already got Cassidy Layton's um, showcase page up. And uh, there are a few things that um, I want to point out and things um, that you'll need to gather um, prior to designing uh, your showcase page. The first, the first thing is, is I want you to go through your... Uh, you know, you can you can put things on your showcase that are from your freshman year all the way up until your current year, um, and they can be from diverse um, places, uh, from math, from science, uh, from you know social studies, language arts, um, from sticker design, uh, graphic design, whatever it is that you're proud of, um, something that you've designed and you think is really cool. Um, should go into your showcase page. Uh, we'd like to see a little bit of a diversity, though, so we don't want just everything graphically that you've done, like all of the, you know, all of the Photoshop assignments or uh, Illustrator assignments that you've done. We want to see writing samples. We would love to see math samples um, and even maybe a physics project or something like that, um, because we want to show how you know show your diverse range of skills. Um, uh, in biz and also um, obviously to other people who are going to come and visit your portfolio. Um, so what you're going to need are a few things. One is you're going to need some kind of thumbnail image right here where I'm hovering my mouse over and so this in this first sample of um, Cassidy's she's got one of the yearbook cover designs that she's done. Um, and you'll notice that it's a small thumbnail version of that image. Okay. So you're going to have to do two things. One is you're going to have to find graphic images to represent um, your project. So if it's a written project, um, say for like a like an essay or a physics piece, um, you may need to find some type of picture either via Google or perhaps you know if you did like a like a trebuchet project, you you, know, you have a picture of your trebuchet um, and you put the you put the trebuchet picture in there. You'll need to resize it though. So this yearbook cover right here is actually pretty large. It's you know full size. It's 11 by 17, um, and that would be way too large to put on the showcase page. So you'll need to bring that into Photoshop and resize it. And you'll want to keep most of these pretty consistent. Uh, if you scroll down through here, you'll see that most of these images uh, are fairly consistent, although they they kind of jump around a little bit, and that's okay, you know, because not every image is going to fit perfectly. But if you can try to maintain um, consistency, uh, you know, I think that makes your page just look a little bit more cleaner um, onto the right. But not totally necessary. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. You're not gonna get knocked down for doing something like that. Okay. Um, so you're gonna need an image, and then you're gonna need the actual. Uh, the actual assignment, the the full version of it. So if you look underneath here, um, sorry about that. So if you look underneath here, the there is a link um, for uh, her assignment for the yearbook cover. And so if I click on this, it'll open up the full version of uh, the yearbook cover. It's a pretty sweet cover, in my opinion. Um, so I'm going to click back here, and then when you click on the image itself, when you click on the thumbnail, it also links to the full-size image, or um, the full-size assignment. So if it's a written assignment, this would go to the document, okay? So if it's a document, say like problem of the week right here, and I click on this, you notice that when I click on this, up in here, it'll tell you that it's a PDF, okay? So if it's a Word document, you're going to have to convert your Word document into a PDF. So when I go through the tutorial, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do an example of assignment um, that is, uh, you know, a, a document to go with it. And underneath the title, you have um, the description. You have a description of the assignment and uh, kind of the purpose of it and what you what you really liked about your what you really liked about what you did with the assignment, why you're proud of it kind of thing. Okay? All right, so let's get started. We're going to tab over to Dreamweaver here. And 
and uh, I'm going to open up the showcase page. Okay, and we're down here in code view, and I'm going to show you the what I've kind of what I've already prepared for you. So I'm going to tab over to uh, my a Word document that I've already opened. No, I'm sorry, I didn't open it. Go to my Finder and go to my desktop and my portfolio folder. There we go. Okay, so I have in my documents folder here, I have a business plan um, document and that's the one that I'm going to use um, from my file um, sample. So I'm just going to open this guy up and obviously I don't have the whole thing in here. I'm just using this as an example and I've saved this in my documents folder. We can't, we don't want to link up the uh, the Word document per se because um, not everybody has Word on their computer. So if you save it as a PDF, um, anyone can will be able to open it up um, in, a, in a web browser. So with my, do my, my document open, I'm just going to go File, Save As, and I'm going to change that file format down here to a PDF. And then save it in the same folder there that I have. Okay, and then you'll also notice that in my um, portfolio, I'm going to close this up a little bit so we can see what we're looking at. You'll notice that in my portfolio, I have in my images folder, I have another folder called work samples. And this is where I've saved um, images to go along with, um, to go along with my, my example. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to open up um, this business JPEG here and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to open with... Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so you'll notice that my image here is already sized. Um, if I go to image, image size, this image size is, let me switch it to pixels, is 150 pixels by 150 pixels. Okay, um, we could probably make this up to 200. Let's start with 150 and see how this looks on our showcase page. Okay, but I've just made a simple, or found this uh, on Google, just a simple image representation for uh, the business plan. Now if it's, you know, for you, you may need to resize this, okay? Now if this was a graphic image, like if this work sample, if your work sample is a is a an, an, an image, like the yearbook cover, you want to save the original. You want to keep the original size of the yearbook cover, and then what you'd want to do is when you go to image and image size, okay, and you resize it as 150 or 200, whatever you want to make the size to, you need to file, save as, and save that as a thumbnail. So save it as the, you know, business plan or yearbook cover, and then save it as thumbnail, just like that. Okay, um, and that'll be a, that you'll be able to differentiate your original image size to the thumbnail that you're going to use um, in the showcase page. So for any images like the yearbook cover or say like, you know, Bizapalooza poster or something like that, um, you want to have the two different files. You want to have the original full size version and you want to have a thumbnail version and you want to name the thumbnail version as thumbnail so that you can easily insert that into uh, your showcase page. Now the reason why you resize these larger sized images in Photoshop is because it reduces the file size of the image. So when you insert that thumbnail image, it's a reduced file size into your page. If you were to resize that full-sized image in um, Dreamweaver, which you certainly could do, the file size doesn't change. It's the same file size as a 20 by 30, even though the image might look like it's only, you know, 150 pixels wide in Dreamweaver. But it's the same file size. It hasn't changed. You've only changed the size in Dreamweaver. You haven't actually changed the physical file uh, like you do when you resize it in Photoshop. So that's why it's a good idea to do that because, uh, you know, a really large image file size loading in a web page um, takes forever, especially on a slow internet connection. Uh, so you want to make sure that you, you, you account for that and uh, treat your users nicely by giving them a page that loads quickly um, rather than having to wait for a, an image that's only 150 pixels big um, and it looks like it's just taking forever to load and the reason why it would take forever to load is because the file size hasn't changed at all. Okay, So I'm going to cancel that because this is already resized for me. Um, so I've got my two components. I've got my PDF ready and saved and I've got my graphic image ready um, to go into my to my showcase page 
So now I'm going to tab over to Dreamweaver here. And uh, I'm going to delete out this bit of text here where we have all paragraphs. And um, it's up to you if you want to put in a, a heading, you know, that says like showcase um, at the top. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, like when you click on showcase and when you go to that page, you probably don't need a heading that says showcase on it. I don't think it hurts, you know, um, totally your call on that. So in each, um, each, you need a title for each work sample. And so I'm going to go ahead and use an H2 for that. So that stands out really nicely. And so I'm going to open up an H2 and close it right away. And then I'm going to type in business plan. Okay. And then underneath that, I'm going to have a paragraph with some descriptions uh, of my business plan. So I don't uh, necessarily have that yet. So, uh, and I don't, you know, I'm not going to waste your time here and try to write something out. So I'm going to do a real quick thing by going over to my education research piece. And I'm going to grab some ipsum lorem text that I've used before. And I'm just going to copy that. So I'm just using this to fill it out so you can see, so we can see what the image is going to look like. You should probably have about, you know, like two, three sentences description wise um, about your project. Okay. And then I know I have a link below that that goes directly to the, um, to the assignment. So I'm going to hit return a couple of times and then type in another paragraph and then close that tag out real quick. And then I'm just going to say something like, click here to view my business plan. Okay, something like that. You don't have to necessarily do those exact words. All right, so if we click over on design view um, and click on live so we can see actually what it looks like. We've got our little, we've got our title, we've got our paragraph, and then we have um, our bit of text. So while I'm in design view, I'm just going to quickly um, link up this, this text over here. So I'm going to open up my documents folder in the files folder and locate where business plan PDF is. So then I'm just going to highlight that text right there. And then I'm going to use my point to file to highlight and link that link. So click here to view my business plan. Next, I want to go ahead and insert the image to go along with this. So I'm going to jump back to code view and I'm actually going to put it above that H2 business plan so that whatever image I put in there lines up with the rest of um, my text. So I'm going to hit the enter return key here and tab in and then I'm going to type in image SRC and then browse and then go to my images folder and work samples and then select business plan JPEG. And then I'm going to hit the space bar and type in alt and I'm going to type in business plan for the alt key on that. And then if you remember right to make sure that our images go to the right of the text uh, we're going to use that that uh, class that we created called float right so the image floats to the right of the text. So after that alt, alt tag I'm going to type in class and then type in the float right, select float right. And then make sure you hit the right caret so it closes out that line of text. So let's double check to make sure that that went all right. Perfect. Make sure I look at view, live view here. So see that 150 by 150 image fits pretty nicely um, in with uh, that whole little bit of text there. So 150 by 150 is a pretty good um, starting point um, for the size of that graphic. Okay, last but not least, we want to make sure we link up that image. Okay, so I'm gonna actually just going to do this another way. I'm going to click back on design here. And again, since I'm already in design, I could go into code and do the same thing, but I'm going to go into design. And uh, right down here where it says link, hyperlink, I'm just going to grab that point to file again and then select the PDF. So that, that goes right to, and when you click on that image, um, it goes to the PDF. Now there's a couple things that I do recommend um, with this link. Because these are PDFs, I think it's a good idea that these um, these PDFs open in a, in a new window or a new tab. 
So to do that, down here in the properties inspector where it says target, we want to set the target to blank. Okay, and I'm going to show you what that looks like in the code so that you can go back and look at that. Um, so right here where we have the A, href, documents, business plan, there's a target, target blank. And what that'll do is when someone clicks on that link, it's going to open it up in a new tab. Okay, so I tend to do that with documents and images so that it doesn't, so it, my, whoever's uh, viewing my site um, stays on the same page and then, you know, that document just opens up in a, in a new tab. So I want to do the same thing for the, the text link down here on the bottom. So I'm going to place my cursor right after the, the plan.pdf and type in the space bar and then type in target and then hit enter return and then type in underscore blank and hopefully the, your code hint comes up for you guys um, for that. So the, the, the property value is underscore blank after target. Okay, so I'm click back on design view and kind of check out what I got. Finished product here. Okay, looks pretty good. Now, um, quick trick. Uh-oh, sorry about that. Go back to... Uh-oh, my dreamy were just crashed on me. Isn't that fantastic? That means I just lost all of my work. So, save as you go, folks. Save as you go. I'm going to go ahead and hit pause and uh, redo what we just did and get us back up to speed. So, hang on just a sec. Okay, so I'm back. So, just... Uh, you know, that happens to the best of us. Uh, um, things crash on you unexpectedly. So what's the rule of thumb? Save as you go, save as you go. Even in, even in this, you know, a simple uh, coding program like Dreamweaver, sometimes, you know, things happen. Um, and, and don't do what I did and just, uh, you know, obviously not save as you go and, and lose a bunch of work. Okay, so where are we at? Um, finished out. Um, I just redid exactly what we had uh, just a minute ago. We have our business plan, our description, our link, and our image. Um, and uh, the next step for this is obviously to insert more um, work sample pieces. Now, here's what you might run into. Um, if your graphic um, is larger or exceeds your line of text, then you're going to have some floating issues with the, the next um, the next example, your next work sample, um, because the text will want to run into the, pr the previous image um, because of the fro float property. Float property um, continues, it inherits what's ever you know, underneath it, so it continues to be inherited throughout your document. So the, the trick is, is to essentially cancel that out um, after each, after each uh, entry. And we've already done this um, once before on our on our home page and maybe even use the same trick on a couple of other pages. So I'm going to jump into code view and I'm just going to be proactive about this and to save you guys time later on and, and headaches, um, you know, just in case you run into this. And I would just do this as a general practice after each entry uh, of your one of your work samples. So I'm going to place my cursor right after the paragraph where it says click here to view my business plan. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter return key a few times. And I'm going to do this so that I can place this little tag right in between. So that when I put my next, uh, my next uh, entry in there, that I clearly see that it's a separate entry and that it's its own you know, individual piece. And so when I need to go back later on into the code, and if I need to make any adjustments, I can do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put in that a break tag and we're going to add that class clear so that if we have you know a problem with the the image um, in the next entry uh, it'll take care of this uh, for us pretty easily. So I'm going to type in a left caret and type in break and then enter return space class and then clear. Okay. And so the next time that I put in an entry, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste the previous one just to illustrate um, what I'm talking about. So I'm going to hit Control C, and then right underneath Control V, so you can kind of see the two separate entries there, right? And then click over to Live View, and so what's what's it what it's doing here is it's creating a clean break right here between the first entry and the second entry, and so that when you go through down and you put each one in 
it's going to look clearly like it's that image belongs to that body of text and you don't have any kind of wrapping issues because um, some of you guys what I'll note it what you'll notice is that if you don't put enough text in your description um, then the, the entry that follows it will run into run into that image um, so make sure that you go ahead and put in this break class after each entry and once you put it in the first time you can just simply go control C or command C and then after that next entry hit enter return and then command V or control V um, so that it continues on down the list so make sure you put that break class in after each entry um, for a solid grade you should have a minimum of five five showcase pieces uh, to to get the the full score on your um, showcase the other thing that you absolutely would need and I'm just giving you a heads up now because this is what tends to happen on um, when I grade these is that each graphic image needs to link to the actual showcase and this link needs to go to the actual um, also the work sample I mean not the, I'm sorry this graphic needs to go to the actual work sample and as well as does this link um, you don't want to you don't want to make people think so most images people think of those as being links to something pretty common so make sure that you link those to the actual work sample and also make sure that you've saved all of your work samples in your portfolio folder they should not be saved and linked into your into like a separate folder like your CSB you know trimester three folders they should all be in your portfolio folder uh, if they're not then you're gonna end up with, with with what's called broken links and that'll you'll get docked a little bit on your on your final grade um, second make sure that any word documents that you have link are PDFs that they're not they're not linked as actual Word documents so make sure that you go in to Microsoft Word and save anything as a PDF um, if it's in publisher or anything like that uh, make sure they're all saved as PDFs you want to make sure that your documents when you open them are web friendly so PowerPoints often don't translate very well um, for the web so you might consider not putting any work samples in that are um, that are that are PowerPoints um, unless you can convert those to PDFs um, so anything that you know besides images images are fine any JPEGs or PNGs uh, movie files make sure that if it's a movie file um, it's a it's a dot MOV but better yet probably a dot MP4 I recommend that if you do want to put in a work sample that is a movie that you put it in as a YouTube video um, and obviously I didn't cover that in this tutorial so if you need help with that um, I can show you on an individual basis on how to do that but you're better off um, saving a, a movie as a as a YouTube video because you can embed that YouTube video in your in your page and uh, the YouTube videos are good ways to go or I mean or even Vimeo if you're a Vimeo fan um, but to do that um, it's important because when you upload a file to YouTube it compresses it at a you know at a phenomenal rate and so when you put that into a a web page um, it doesn't slow down your web page it doesn't it doesn't bring down you know the the load speed um, of your page so using a the, like a YouTube application is awesome and plus it's just another way for someone who is a viewer to find you using like say a YouTube search or something like that you know to get to your web page so think about that um, anyway so that's gonna wrap up our showcase uh, tutorial I'm gonna do one more tutorial um, to show you how to make sure that your plant your page is ready to go and be put over to the server um, and so your page gets live uh, on the biz.creatorcommons.com webpage.